Um, so these questions, I think uh, it's questions one and four. Um, let's see, should I do? You know, let me do it as a kind of, I don't know, I want to test myself to see how much I remember, but I would encourage you to look at the appendix and do it side, um, have it, if you are doing on a computer screen, have it side by side and go through it yourself. It, this is the kind of exercise where um, you do get uh, more out of it by uh, looking up this table. <laughs> this is one place where I do want you to look up the data table and kind of recognizing for yourself uh, what each of these apply to. And most of these, uh, like what they're looking for, semi-major axis, they should be uh, directly listed. So that's physical data. There should be an or yeah, orbital data. They tell you, you know, semi-major axis. So, so I encourage you to do that. So right now I will just uh, try answering this without um, looking up <laughs> and without any um, much of an explanation, I'll just uh, quickly do it. So, okay, which major planet has the largest, okay, so that's the largest orbit. It's gonna be Neptune because uh, Pluto is not a major planet. It's a dwarf planet. <laughs> um, yeah, Pluto isn't even in the, on the list. I think I was trying not to be tricky. Okay, which major planet has the largest average orbital speed? Um, this is Kepler's third law question, actually, because it's a roundabout way of asking which is innermost, Mercury. Um, largest orbital period, it's the flip side of the just the previous question. So it's again Neptune. Um, which major planet has the largest eccentricity? Oh, that's a, I think it's Mars. Um, the, the orbital bodies with the larger eccentricity are dwarf planets like Pluto and Eris. Uh, second, <laughs> okay, so this one, I'm pretty sure I don't know um, for a fact. I, I would probably have to look it up in the table for me to answer correctly for sure. If I had to guess, I think I'm gonna guess Mercury. Um, I could be wrong, but let me guess Mercury. Um, it's definitely not Earth. I think I'm pretty sure about that. Okay. Um, wait, did I miss? I must have missed the two. <laughs> um, let me try Neptune. I don't think that's right, but let me just give it a try. No. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, as far as I remember. Um, Uranus? No. <laughs> um, I mean, at some point I'm gonna run out of guesses. So um, I'm pretty sure it's not Earth, so I'm not guessing Earth. Let me try, Venus doesn't sound right to me, but maybe, okay. What has my, have my guessed? I've guessed Neptune. Did I guess Uranus yet? Yeah, I think I did. All right, all right. I'm not guessing anymore. <laughs> Let me do what I uh, recommended that you do and just to look it up. So orbital data, um, orbital eccentricity. So, oh, you know, I was wrong. Uh, Mars doesn't have the largest eccentricity. So these two are flipped around. Huh. Uh, okay, that, that's a, I don't know why it's a, it's, it's surprised to me. Um, so it's this way. So I guess um, I got my um, memorized facts facts um, mixed up in the sense that it is true that Mars has an unusually large eccentricity, which was important in that Kepler was analyzing Mars's orbit and. He could notice the difference between a circular orbit and elliptical orbit. And, um, but I guess um, the reason it was a Mercury he focused on must be, Mercury is pretty hard to observe because it's on the inner orbit. You can only see it like near the evening and morning. And so uh, I guess Tycho Brahe's data on Mars must be better than Mercury's. So. Okay, um, let me go, try to go more quickly. Um, so this number four question is the same deal. I recommend that you look up the, um, the up appendix. And this one, I'll just do my best and whichever I get or don't get, I will 
just to move on. And uh, just so that people know, uh, I think I brought this up in most of the one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, your timed assessment, they do draw from these, but when I generate the version for the timed assessment, I try not to focus on uh, more obscure facts, <laughs> only the ones that I can remember, ones that I myself can remember. So, um, so anyways, let me start with that. Um, so smallest planet, that's Mercury, um, A. Largest moon, that's uh, I think a Ganymede. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Ganymede is the largest. So larger than our moon. Uh, moon with a, well, only appreciable atmosphere is Titan. And I think a Triton, uh, when I was looking it up, it had some atmosphere number, but it's super tiny. A uh, Triton has almost the same uh, atmosphere pressure as Earth, just different composition. Um, yeah, Titan, yeah. Okay, um, the planet with the diameter closest to Earth, that's Venus. Um, I think it lecture slides um, summarize Venus as most Earth-like a planet with the most uh, atmosphere, most hostile to life. Um, this the dense planet. I think that's uh, Saturn. Um, your textbook claims it'll float on water. Um, the most uh, massive moon. I want to say Ganymede. Uh, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I want to say Ganymede. The densest moon. Oh yeah, th this is where I would have to look it on myself. Um, if I had to guess, I would say our own moon because the farther out you go, the less dense uh, materials tend to be. Um, densest planet, oh, there might be Earth, I think. It's either Earth or Venus. I don't think it's Mercury. Um, the terrestrial planet where you do weigh the most, and the, here the important thing is terrestrial. Um, with the gas giants, you don't really have a surface to talk about, so. Um, and here, I think that's Earth. Um, yeah, I think because all the other terrestrial planets are smaller or slightly smaller. Could be Venus. If I'm wrong, then it's Venus. Planet that takes the shortest time to rotate. I'm gonna guess Jupiter. Uh, these gas giants, they spin pretty fast. Yeah, you can look up the data. Uh, the planet that takes the longest time to rotate. Um, I think it might be it's either Venus or Mercury or Uranus. Um, let me guess Venus. So I'm pretty sure I didn't get 100% here because really the intent of um, these are that you would, <laughs> look, you would look up the appendix. It's an appendix looking up exercise. So I'm pretty sure I didn't get 100%, but you know what, 91% is close enough. I must have missed the one. 